All right. So next on our list of to-dos, we're going to do an oil cooler. Um, this is not an M car. So it has this style of oil filter housing, which are prone to leaking on all of these inline sixes. This one is leaking, so it needs to be resealed anyways. Uh, good a time as ever. So we're going to be having it off to upgrade it. Um, the, the biggest issue with this style versus the M style is the M style has ports right here that we can adapt to run an external oil oil cooler. Um, so I have a new oil filter housing that we're going to be installing. I oh, will show it to you like this. So brand new from BMW. As you can see, all the accessories bolt to it. So we're going to have to dig it out. Um, that's how it seals. And here are our oil cooler holes uh, for the factory oil cooler that the M-Series has. Uh, Mishimoto makes, there's your part number, they make an adapter that threads in here that turns those into AN fittings. Um, and then we're going to be running a Mishimoto, uh, I think it's a 19 row oil cooler. Uh, be building our own lines for it. Um, but we'll get there in a minute. And then while we're in there, we're going to be using this uh, Rally Road uh, oil distribution block that's going to mount um, on this housing back here. That's going to give us an opportunity to get oil temperature. Um, and run an oil temperature gauge into the cab while we're in there. Uh, one thing we're going to do before we install this is we're going to delete this thermostat right here uh, with VAC makes, there's your part number from VAC, um, but they make a delete kit for that. Um, so we're going to be pulling this out and deleting that, um, getting this all set up, and then next step will be starting to tear all this out. As you can see, I've already got the fan out of the way um, because I just put this coil red radiator in. Um, so while we're doing all this, we're kind of overlapping. So the expansion tank is out right now. Uh, the fan is out right now. And I already have the belt off and the power steering pump off because I just got done doing the oil pan. Um, but to get the belt off, you have your tensioner here, so you're just going to put a ratchet on that and um, pull away, and you can get the belt off. The power string pump is just held on by a few bolts. Uh, they're pretty obvious. You'll be able to see them. Uh, and then next, we'll take the power steering reservoir and the alternator off, and that should give us access to our oil filter housing. So... To install this delete, this thermostat delete, um, what we're going to do is you can see that there is a almost like a snap ring in here, but it doesn't have uh, snap ring plier holes. So we're going to try to just get underneath this with, I'm going to try it with a pick tool. I might need a flathead, um, but essentially we're going to try to just get this out. Yeah, we might need to get underneath it with a flathead. So it looks like I can compress this like so. And then I'm going to grab a flathead. And be careful not to mess up your new gasket. If you're worried about it, just pull your gasket out. And this might fly, so I'm going to put my hand over it. Okay. So you're going to need to retain this because we need to put it back in. But now we can pull this whole thermostat assembly out. Alright, so now that the old one is out, uh, we're going to take the new one. It has this nipple in the bottom. There's a spot down here for it. I'm just going to stick my finger in here to guide it. We're going to make sure that gets lined up. And then we're going to take our original spring retainer. 
drop it back down in there. And then we're going to take our retaining ring. And I like to get caught up here in this corner. So we're going to start with that edge. And you might need to help it just a touch with the screwdriver. And there it is, installed. So next up, we're going to get the alternator off. So like I told you, the power steering pump's already off. Um, there is a couple, the two top bolts for the power steering. One of them goes into the alternator and into this housing. Um, and the other one, on the, the other, so the other top two have to come off. And then there's uh, one from the bottom. And then that will kind of fall out of the way. Uh, the alternator, basically we have one long through bolt here that we're going to take off that holds this pulley. Um, and then there's another one right there. Camera doesn't want to focus on it, but it's right there. Um, so we're going to take those two off uh, and get the alternator out of the way. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to completely disconnect the alternator or, or if I'm going to have enough swing. I might just undo that plug right there um, and just kind of lay that alternator just kind of over here because we don't actually need it out of the car. Uh, and then we've got two bolts here that hold this reservoir for the power steering on. Uh, once that's all out of the way, it should give us a pretty straight shot to get down here. Obviously, the intake box is out. Uh, pretty self-explanatory to get that out. Um, and then we'll have a straight shot, and we can see the bolts that are holding uh, this unit on and some of the sensors that we need to take off. Okay, so we've got everything out of the way. Uh, power steering, we ended up just kind of tucking over here. Uh, the alternator was in the way. I probably could have worked around it, but in order to get these bottom bolts, it was just easier. It was just one plug um, and then a 17 millimeter uh, to hold the power wire. Make sure your battery's disconnected, obviously. Um, I went ahead and threw some rubber over the lead just for good measure. But now that this is out of the way, you can see um, we've basically got a plug in here. And these are just squeezed. So you just squeeze and they just pull off like that. So they're very easy. There's another one right here. And then um, the next major obstacle is the uh, VVT feed line here. It comes up to right here. So probably what I'm going to, I'm going to be replacing this line anyways, as you should. These are kind of prone for leaking. Um, so I'm going to just disconnect it here. And then we have, I believe, just six bolts that hold this housing on. So you've got one here, one here. One here, one there, and then one there, and then there's one hiding inside this cubby right here. And then this whole thing should come off. Um, we're going to have to, you could do this now or later, um, but this tensioner assembly does bolt to the housing. I believe it's just held on by these two bolts. I'll probably do those off the car just for ease. Um, you could do it on or off, up to you. Um, but that has to be moved over as well. So that's basically where we're at. Obviously, make sure your oil is drained and, uh, and make sure you have something underneath the catch. Um, this is going to make a mess when this comes off. Okay, so we've got it off. Um, basically, like I said, you've just got those six bolts. Um, those six bolts are uh, length specific. So this is kind of the orientation that they came out. Um, obviously, organize them how you want, but um, as you're looking at it from the driver's side, you've got on the left, uh, long, medium, and short. Um, and on the other side, you've got basically, I think these are the same. Yeah. Basically, you've got short, uh, medium, short. Um, and then now that this is off, 
we're basically just going to move this tensioner over. Like I said, it's just two bolts that are holding it on. So those two bolts will uh, move this over to the front of our new one. Um, and then this is them side by side essentially here. So, All right, so the S54 uh, housing, the new one here, has some uh, differences from the original. Uh, one of the main differences being the uh, oil temperature sensor here uh, does not have a home on the new one. Uh, some people just leave it disconnected. Um, you might have an annoying warning light uh, if that's the case. Um, as you can see, I've already started to install my um, adapter here to make those into uh, dash 10 AN fitting. Um, it's not tight just yet, but um, that is going there. Um, one thing that you will need, uh, at least to do it how I'm doing it, is there is this uh, Rally Road oil distribution block here. Uh, one of the main differences between these housings is the banjo bolt size. So this is a 14 millimeter and this is a 12 millimeter. So um, you're not going to be able to just take your um, oil feed line and uh, and just slam it on um, with no issues. Um, we are replacing this line with a new one. Um, and there's two ways that you can go about this. So um, this sensor right here um, would normally thread in right here. Uh, you can put this in either one of these holes, um, this oil distribution block. Um, and I think mine's going to fit better here. And then what I'm going to do is it has two uh, fittings here. It has one here and one here for these sensors. So I think I'm going to put both sensors in this distribution block. Um, and this will give me some room to get a plug in on it. Um, this can clock a little bit if you want it to. Uh, and then up here, we've got an eighth inch NPT uh, for our um, AEM oil temperature gauge that I want to put on the dash. Um, the Because this is 12 millimeter, and not 14, Chase Bays makes a line that is double-ended. So the one end up top is 14 and the end on the bottom is 12. That would be one way to do it. Um, I had already bought this before I realized that. Uh, so VAC actually makes a magic little banjo bolt. I don't know if you can see it there. Let's see if we can get better eyes on it. So it is 14 millimeters up top with a 12 millimeter thread on the bottom. Comes with two size um, crush washers, one for either side. Um, and then this recess right here will hold that smaller crush washer and we'll be able to run the factory size banjo here using this um, special bolt. So uh, you can get this from VAC, you can get it from Beamer World, uh, wherever you want to get it from. That's the way that I'm going to be doing it. Um, had I known ahead of time, I probably would have just bought the Chase Bays kit since I needed to replace the hose anyways. Um, the Chase Bays kit comes with new banjos, new crush washers and everything. And it's a little bit more of a proper way to do it um, than trying to put this oversized one here. So people have good results both ways. So we're going to run it. Um, and then, as we talked about earlier, um, we do have that uh, thermostat delete in there or the oil bypass so that uh, oil will free flow through this all the time. Um, they recommend that that's not good for daily driven cars or street driven cars um, just because it's going to take the oil longer to warm up. Um, this car, I will be driving both, uh, but, you know, let your car warm up and, uh, and we'll go from there. So... Basically, we're going to get these two sensors. Those two sensors are going to go in here. We're going to run our, our oil feed line um, here and uh, with that special fitting. And then um, we're going to be uh, running our oil cooler lines off of here. So <clears throat> beyond that, 
there is one more thing you may need. If you have a three liter, um, and I think that there may be one other motor I'd have to look, I'll put it on the screen here. Um, but there is some power steering pump spacers available. Um, when running this housing, the spacing is different. Let's see if I can get an angle on it. The spacing is different here uh, for the power steering pump where it mounts. And so these spacers will allow correct belt routing uh, between the two. Um, from what I understand, that's not the case on all the motors, um, but specifically on the N54, which is what I have, um, being that this is a 330, um, I will need those spacers as well. So spacers, banjo, or Chase Bay's oil feed line, um, oil distribution block, and um, this adapter, as well as the housing, are all needed in order to make this style of oil cooler work. So I'm going to get everything pre-installed as much as I can uh, because once this is in the car, these are going to be a little bit difficult to get to. So I'm going to pre-install as much as much as I can and uh, and then obviously we have to move over our tensioner bracket and everything. So, so we got this all cleaned up. Um, Make sure that uh, you know you've got that surface clean. Um, I went ahead and hit it with a razor blade to get off some of the old uh, gasket that was on there. Um, and uh, so yeah, we'll get this uh, new housing put on, and um, we'll just get her bolted down, and then we can start hooking up all of our sensors and everything. So we've got it all dressed. Um, I ended up having to flip this oil distribution block over um, what I'd recommend that you do which is what I did um, leave these guys just a little bit loose test fit it um, and see where they want to land um, in my case I flipped this whole thing over uh, seems to fit a lot better um, I try to I put it in I got it all threaded where it was gonna go uh, this basically ended up butting up against here you could probably leave just a little sliver like I did um, I ended up putting this in because I knew it would be a pain in the butt later. This is for our gauge. Um, if you're not running a gauge, then don't worry about it. Hopefully you are if you're running an oil cooler and going through all this work. Um, I didn't change the orientation of these. This is still temperature and this is pressure. Um, but yeah, I left them just a little bit loose so there was a little bit of movement. Put it in there, got everything where it wanted to be, but stiff enough where they kind of stayed in place. And then I got them out here and tightened them down. Um, this, you have to leave kind of loose, uh, because this bolt right here, if you can't move this out of the way, it's going to interfere. Um, we might still have to take it completely off to get that bolt in. Um, but that's it. It's all dressed. Let me show you the difference between those two guys right there. Um, so as you can see, we'll be adding our spacers here to make that all work. Uh, we'll move this over once it's in the car. Um, just You could do it either way. You could do it now or later. Um, I just want a little bit less to work with right now for test fitting and everything. So uh, That is basically how she's going to look. Uh, this goes into an empty space here. The spot where this mounts is actually like that. Um, so you will be able to get a plug-in on that, luckily, um, after the fact. So uh, Everything wants to fit nice. I'll show you as soon as I get it mounted. So I did end up having to take off um, this adapter, so you may as well wait to put that on um, to get this bolt in um, and to be able to get a socket and everything on it. So, uh, But there it is, all installed. Wanted to kind of give you a close-up. Obviously this still needs to be attached here. Um, we've got plenty of room. Uh, so this hose here is what is going to give you a hard time. So. I'll see if I can get a close up down here so we can get focused. There you go. So I ended up having to kind of thread this wire, make sure nothing's pinched. So it's still got free movement. And you have to split the difference. So your hose is going to go on the one side and 
um, your sensor and everything's going to go on the other side of this hose here. Uh, so that's basically how it looks in there. As you can see, there's plenty of room to plug everything in. So our long wire here was our temperature sensor that went here on the old one. So we'll just squirrel that around and get her plugged in. Uh, this is the alternator wire, I believe. It needs to be cleaned up. And then uh, this one went to our, oops, excuse me. And this one here went to our top, uh, our top sensor up there. So we gotta do a little bit of rearranging of the wires, but we're all there. Um, you can't see it from here, but see if I can get down in there. Your temperature sensor's hanging out right there. So yeah, now we can get this adapter on, uh, get our alternator power steering pump remounted, our tensioner remounted, um, and then we can start working on, uh, we'll get the bumper off and uh, start working on the oil cooler. Our sensors are plugged in. Um, this one up here, you kind of have to pull the wire. I'll see if I can get a, a view. So right there, I kind of had to pull the wire up past this bracket just because I didn't like how much it was being pulled on, but it's got plenty of room to mount there. Um, the boot is making it look more drastic than it is. There's uh, plenty of free play in that wire, so uh, for the pressure sensors there. Um, I don't know, you might flip-flop those and put the temperature sensor up top and the pressure down below it just looked like it was going to be real close to that banjo bolt for the temperature sensor so that's your call um, otherwise everything is in um, we've got our adapter plate on now so we can uh, you know build those lines we're going to do the alternator and everything first so that we know what we're working with um, we're going to have to do something creative with power steering um, I might just end up getting the Chase Bay's uh, power steering kit with the cooler and everything. I'm probably going to need it eventually anyways. Um, but that will give me a little bit more flexibility, I think, with where I'm mounting that uh, reservoir. On the M cars, they mount it basically right here, but the intake box is completely different. So uh, we might have to get a little creative. We'll figure that out next. Um, if you're wondering, if you bought this brand new, it does come loaded with a brand new filter. Um, as well, so pretty neat Pretty neat to have a full aluminum um, Housing there um, less chances for it to break. I don't know if that's a issue or not, but um, That's basically it for the actual oil filter housing install um, Other than you know plugging in and routing our sensor wires um, We will be doing that I probably should do that before I mount the alternator and everything just for ease. Um, you could probably do it after. Uh, it probably doesn't really matter, but I'm probably going to just for ease. I'll at least get that wire plugged in and routed. Uh, we're going to route it up into here and probably take it uh, down. There's a, a port down inside this box that will allow us to get into the cab. So, um, yeah. Okay, for the gauge, um, you have this little plug here that's going to plug in to the back side of our oil distribution block where our sensor is. Um, and then there's essentially two sets of wires that run up to this main plug. This plug is going to go into the gauge itself. Um, for this car, this isn't going to be long enough by any means. Um, the other set of wires here uh, we'll end up we'll have to look at the diagram but I'm pretty confident um, power and ground um, we'll have to see what these two are but I know we're gonna need the power and ground here so um, those will all likely end up in this box uh, with a you know key on trigger uh, of some sort or in the cab um, I haven't decided where I'm gonna run it I'm not worried about the length of these wires but our sensor wires are definitely not going to be long enough to make it all the way into the cab and um, up to where I want to put the gauge. 
So we're going to end up lengthening these two wires. Um, pretty straightforward. We're just going to clip them, add some length of wire. Make sure that you don't do it with cheap Walmart butt connectors. Um, we're going to do it either solder them and heat shrink them um, or use non-insulated uh, crimps uh, with heat shrink and uh, and some nice sheathing to protect it. Um, but yeah, essentially that's definitely not going to be long enough to get us where we want to be. So um, we will be lengthening those. I'll probably run this as far as I can and try to do the splicing up in here uh, somewhere so that it's, you know, less exposed to the heat and everything of the motor. Okay, so we are running the wire for our temp sensor. So, um, like I told you, we're going to have to lengthen these. So, actually it makes it a lot easier. I went ahead and clipped them. I clipped them pretty far up. Um, you can kind of be the judge. I left myself a, a good length there, but... Uh, so that I can, you know, splice them in. But I clipped it, you know, pretty far up so that I could run as much of the sheathing, you know, that came with it uh, through. So I ran it up through here. Um, there's a little notch right back here that I've already ran my... Uh, I ran some wires for the reverse switch for the manual swap that we did earlier on this car. I went ahead and ran them through the same area. Um, had it come through here. I will be, uh, I'll get this to focus, so we'll be pulling that a little bit tighter so it'll look something like that when it's done, but uh, just kind of grabbed a few spots with some zip ties, fastened it, I uh, ran it, routed it down with some other wires, um, ended up fastening it there to our uh, temperature sensor wire, um, and then got it plugged in uh, down there where the sensor is. So. Uh, one thing you want to be kind of careful of, and the reason I'm using zip ties, is you want to give yourself, you know, kind of a, a good U-shaped loop there. You don't want these wires uh, coming off the sensor since it's kind of facing the wrong direction. You don't want those uh, wires to be, you know, tugged tight at a 90 degree angle. So I've got a nice little U-shaped loop down here um, for that wire, um, and then I've secured it so that it, it doesn't get pulled tight. Uh, during the process so uh, pulled it up through here so that's where we're at so far um, I'm probably gonna run the other wires from the inside out I'm gonna get this cover off um, and then I'm gonna find uh, where we're gonna tap into power and ground I'm gonna do key on uh, power and uh, and we may just end up tapping ground there depending on where we tie in so um, I'll let you know where we're going to tie in. I'm going to look at the instructions and just see what all it wants. If it just wants power and ground or if it wants some other wires as well. Um, and then we'll rendezvous back. So I just wanted to make a quick comment here uh, before we get too far. So this uh, Rally Road oil distribution block, um, it's super modular. So set it up however you feel fit. Um, after sleeping on it, I think I probably could have flipped it so that that guy was facing right here. I think it would have came over the top of this and cleared. Um, I'm a little too deep to try it now, but that would have given a little bit better access. Your uh, gauge temperature sensor and stuff would have probably landed right, right in here. Um, this is going to work for me, but uh, when you're putting yours together... Maybe try a few different uh, orientations and just see what you think is uh, best. I might, if I have to ever take this apart again, I might try flipping it um, just to get all the wires kind of in a better place. But um, I know this will work for now. Uh, I, I'm not concerned about the wires being pulled on. They all have plenty of slack in them. Um, this will create a little bit of a cleaner look because we won't have... Because if you put one here, probably your temperature sensor you'd have to wrap the wire kind of over and in, but um, that's completely up to you. So this isn't the only way to install this. Uh, that distribution block can be flipped uh, left, right, upside, right side, um, whatever fits your situation. You might have an aftermarket intake and that will give you plenty more room. You might have a different uh, motor, might give you more room. 
Um, lots of different ways to go about it. So for our power steering pump, there's two ways that you can go about this uh, with the S54 um, <coughs> oil filter housing, excuse me. Um, so there's two types of uh, spacer kits you can buy. Some of them just have these two spacers. Some of them have three. Um, I bought the one with three um, and uh, I'm probably just gonna be using these two. Um, I didn't realize until it was already installed uh, what this third one is for. Uh, so <clears throat> essentially you have these two bolts and then there's a third one generally that goes a uh, vertical that holds the power steering pump on. Now the new housing um, does not have a through hole and I'll show you that um, here in just a second so that makes sense. So when you're mounting your pump uh, the front two spacers Sorry, this is really difficult to get video of, but the front two spacers go there in between uh, the, the power string bracket and the oil filter housing. Now, from the original one has that long bolt goes all the way through and attaches to that threaded insert on the back uh, side of this bracket. Now, this housing, as you can see, is not drilled all the way through, so had I drilled that through before I mounted this and I and you may be able to still do it if you have a 90 degree drill bit um, I don't have one at the moment so um, I'm going to just be running those front two spacers um, and then maybe at some point in the future if this ever has to come apart again I'll drill that through and throw that long bolt but the small spacer goes there in between um, the back of the housing and that threaded uh, portion of the bracket so hopefully that makes sense there you can clearly see that it's not drilled through um, but you can see that hole so what I ended up doing and you could go to the hardware store um, I happen to have a pretty good collection of takeoff bolts from other projects um, I found a similar bolt to the factory bolt. Um, I believe it's M8125. I'll uh, put that on the screen here. Um, but basically you just need a duplicate of this bolt to be able to run just the two front spacers uh, to mount the power steering pump. So you can see now that the pulleys are lined up. Um, let's see if we can get you a view of those spacers. Here we go. So, that's the spacer installed. Um, you can see that gap in the back of this bracket here where that uh, smaller spacer would have gone had that been drilled through. Um, and then you can see there where the original um, third bolt would have mounted. Now, you probably could get away with just removing this bracket altogether off the back of the pump. Um, I decided not to just because I feel like that spot is giving it some stability um, because it's braced pretty well up against the bottom of that housing. So it gives it some stability from, uh, from tilting forward and back too much. Um, at least I'd like to believe so. So um, I wiggled this thing pretty hard. It feels pretty solid just with those two top bolts in. So we're gonna run it. Um, I don't think that we're gonna have any issues. If we do, the next step would be to drill that through and uh, get a clamp through the back, but I don't think we're gonna have problems. So now that this is mounted back on, we can put our belt back on, finish uh, installing our, um, finish installing our, uh, our fan. Um, and then, uh, Next, we'll work on pulling the bumper so that we can get the auxiliary fan out and uh, get our um, oil cooler mounted. Um, here is, if we didn't talk about this before, here's the manual version of the, uh, the reservoir adapter plate there. So it doesn't have the ports for the automatic transmission cooler. 
Um, but yeah, so we are uh, ready to continue.